Hey YouTube, I'm back with another Osmo Tetra video for you guys. When I was researching for this video last night, I come across this post. This is from Harold Welter. He's the head honcho over at Osmocom, and this is the Osmocom message board here, where he's basically confirming our suspicions that the Team Midnight Blue guys, they're the team responsible for the Tetra hack a few years ago, were in fact using Osmo Tetra. Now, I think we already knew that because we inspected some of their terminal windows in their demo videos, but still pretty cool to see that coming from the guy that developed Osmo Tetra in the first place. And yeah, this part here, he's basically saying that one of the research researchers from Team Midnight Blue is still contributing patches to Osmo Tetra from July 2022. So that's getting active development from the Tetra hack guys. So very cool. Um... Now, for this tutorial, we're going to be using the SQ5 BPF uh, fork of Osmo Tetra. And I think this is a pretty interesting commit here. Send information about the network encryption flag and types of encryption seen on the network. So this is not going to break Tetra encryption, obviously, but it is going to try and pass encrypted packets and display information um, about the encrypted flag on the frames, I'm guessing. So that's that's pretty cool. So we're going to be using this. Um, I don't have any encrypted Tetra here in my city, unfortunately, but hey, um, hopefully you guys will be able to capture some and send it to me. So let's set the scene hardware and software wise now. Well, I suppose I should tell you guys what we're doing today. We're going to be capturing Tetra data to a C file and decoding it later with the um, decoding tools. Now, this is going to be handy for me because I put the call out there a few or a few days ago, well, kind of last week, really, saying that I'd like to grab some encrypted tetra and have a look at it um i'm not going to try and do anything naughty with that data i just want to have a look to see what encrypted packets look like once they're decoded with the tool so yeah we're going to be doing that um as you can see here i'm using dragon os lts final for this and the reason for that is this tool here is actually pretty old now at this point and one of the old c file demodulating Python applications only works in Python 3.7, whereas the new Dragon OS, Focal X and Noble, I think have Python 3.10. So that's the reason we're using an older version of Dragon OS or Linux. Um, so yeah, try this at your own risk on other distributions, but this is made for Dragon OS LTS, okay? And yeah, I'm trying to make it as accessible as possible because I want you guys to send me data. So we're actually doing this in a virtual machine, guys, as you can see here. We're using VMware Workstation 17 and I'm using an RTO SDR. And the reason for that and not using my AirSpy is because I know a lot of people have RTO SDRs and not AirSpy. So I'm trying to make this as accessible as possible. So we're doing it in a virtual machine, guys, and we're doing it with an RTL. So that's the two easiest ways to get into this kind of stuff, okay? So yeah, that, with all that being said, let's get on with the tutorial, shall we? So I'm going to run this command, and that's going to fetch the program files for the SQ5 BPF fork of Osmo Tetra. And we can see here that it's downloaded the program files into our home directory. Now we're going to run this combination command here. This is going to CD into the source directory of Osmo Tetra, and then it's going to make it. So we're just going to run that command. And you'll see a bunch of like, Object files and binaries get built in there. So that's that's a good sign. So this is something that I've been working on the last few days. And if I just go back to my home directory here, we can see here I've got tetra underscore, un, uh, underscore capture underscore gr37. So this is a Python script that I've been working on. And it's going to allow us to capture a or capture a C file, which is a complex float file. Is it complex float? Yeah, complex float 32 file, which is basically an IQ recording of Tetra signals as received by an SDR, okay? So I can just run this command here. And as you can see here, for any aficionados of GSM decoding, I've actually modeled it very similar to how the GRGSM 2G cellular capture tool works. So yeah, we can basically send it almost the same commands here. So um, I've got this pre-written command here and I'll just explain 
all the flags and arguments for you guys. Actually, what I'll do is I'll clear that so we can see what we're doing here. So I'm addressing the binary, which is in our home directory. So I'll put this for download link in the description and the pin comment. And also I'll put all the commands I'm running in the description and pin comment as well. So yeah. And then maybe over the course of the next few days, I'll start porting this to other SDRs. I haven't tried anything but an RTL SDR, but it should work with other SDRs, I think. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to test that. So, so we're addressing the binary, which is existing in our home directory. So this is the frequency of a known Tetra downlink signal here in my city where I live in Australia. So it's 464.194. And this figure is in Hertz. So... When we're talking about like UHF and VHF signals, they're typically, you know, 132.693 or something like that. And then there'll be three zeros after it because mega is million. So we need 464, 194, and then three zeros. That's engineering notation to add three more zeros there. So we're using a sample rate of one mega samples per second so that we address that by one with six zeros. So one E6. We set the gain flag and that will just configure SDR to use a gain of 40. And then O is file output. And that's going to create a file in our home directory called capture.c file. So I'll just run that command now. And then we'll leave it for about, I'll capture about a gigabyte. So yeah, we'll just wait. That'll probably take a few minutes to capture. So I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, guys, so I've reached my target capture size of one gigabyte there. So you can just press the Control C keyboard shortcut to quit the capturing application. And then, yeah, you can see here in our home directory, we have a capture.c file and it's one gigabyte in size. So that's excellent. So the next command we're going to run is we're actually going to demodulate it. Now, I'm not an RF or SDR DSP engineer here. What I'm led to believe this is doing is demodulating all the bits and then writing it to a file called capture.float. So I'll just uh, explain what we're doing here. So tetra demod.py is part of the Osmo Tetra fork program files. Um, v stands for verbose. I is the input file. And so we're just addressing capture.c file. The sample rate is S. So you can't use engineering notation and put E6 there. You have to use um one with six zeros that's one mega sample per second and then the o flag is the output file and that's going to create capture.float in the home directory here so i'm just going to hit enter on that and this is going to take a little bit to pass so i'll just press enter on that and i'll see you guys shortly okay so that didn't take too long maybe less than a minute or something and you can see here that now we have a dot capture dot float file with a size of 9.5 megabytes. So in my testing and stuff like that that I've been doing over the last few days, get about 10 megabytes per gigabyte, essentially, roughly. That's what I've noticed anyway on this particular base station. So the next command we need to use is we need to use this binary here, um, which is part of the Osmo Tetra program files and yeah that's uh sorry yeah we can just address the binary like that and then it gives us our usage and flags and stuff like that so i've got the pre-written command here and it's going to turn this float file into a dot bits file okay so that's just more post-processing of the demodulated bits i'm guessing so i'm just going to hit enter on that and i absolutely love seeing ones and zeros in the terminal window because that means we're getting data outstanding um and yeah we're all, we've almost then we've almost reached the end of this part of the tutorial now and we have this final command here so i'll just start uh, clear the terminal window here so now this is going to address the binary tetra rx and that is the ultimate oops that is the ultimate uh binary that's going to demodulate all the bits and turn it into human readable tetra data for us so yeah we can just send it the h argument and see the different flags and configuration options there but i've already got my pre-written command here we'll come back and have a look at these some of these options very shortly i'll just hit enter on that command there and that 
is we're using the A flag to designate, like to, to tell it which file to decode, and that is capture.bits, 4.8 megabytes. So we'll just hit enter on that. And there we have it. We have Tetra data. And the thing why we've been giving this a lot of attention, this Osmo Tetra app, is we have actually got raw burst bits here on the Tetra frames. So that's that's very, very cool. Um, right, oh, I just want to turn your attention to here quickly. So I'll just clear the terminal window again, and then we'll just run the H argument for Tetra RX, and we'll just go through some of the options here. So it's actually got its own inbuilt float to bits converter. So we can actually skip the entire step of using, I think it's this command here. Yes, we can skip that command there, right? So because we can send it the I argument in addition with the A argument and it will use its internal float to bits. So I've got this command here where we're going to actually skip the step of float, turning it from the floats, a float file into a bits file here. And at the same time, I'm actually going to show you guys how to record all that printed Tetra data in the terminal window to a text document called capture.txt. And that might come in handy for something later, maybe. Um, I'll hit enter on that command. And then, yeah, we can see here capture.txt basically just has all the data that was just printed in the terminal window there. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else? So let's go back. The video is basically over now, guys. So let's go back to this command here. Something that's interesting to me is this E argument here, right? I'll just read it out for the people who are listening and not watching. The E argument allows passing of encrypted packets. Note, this will return gibberish because they are encrypted in capitals. It won't break any encryption, etc. Okay, so that's basically why I want to grab some encrypted Tetra data from somebody else out there that has access to that. Cause I just want to see what this E flag does. I want to see what the, what the data looks like. And if, um, this fork of Osmo Tetra will actually identify encrypted packets in the terminal output, like here. Hey guys, sorry, this is Rob from the future here. I forgot to mention during the recording of that video that you guys, if you are going to send me Tetra data, you guys don't have to send me a one gigabyte file or a four gigabyte file, right? You can just send me the capture.floats file, which is exported when you run the Tetra Dmod Python script, right? So you guys could re record a 10 or 20 gigabyte C file. And then if you just run that command there and turn it into a capture.float file, you can just send me the 50 megabyte file as opposed to sending me 20 gigabytes. Does that make sense? So yeah, just thought I'd mention that to you guys. So yeah, I'll leave you to go head back and continue watching the video. Bye. Yeah, I hope you guys found that video interesting. Don't forget, I put all the comments I'm running and I'll put the download link to this Tetra Capture GR37.py capture script. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next Osmo Tetra video, hopefully. Bye.